Hello everybody and welcome to this week's project. We have another laptop here, this is the Lenovo 100S and this is described as having a motherboard fault. Now, as usual, I have no power adapter and the battery has been taken out of it so I have no means of getting power onto the board so I'm going to have to bring that power from my DC power supply. So let's just take a look at the back and see what power this requires. Okay, this requires 5 volts and up to 4 amps. So I'm going to hook up my own DC power supply to this motherboard to get power onto it and we'll see if it powers on. This is my scan of the motherboard. So we're looking where to inject voltage. Well, of course, what we're looking for first is the DC in jack. So this has one of these little barrel connections. So we have a center pin in the middle, which is the positive, and then there's an outer, which is the ground. But we can quite easily identify what the ground is. You can see the pins of that DC jack are connected. And we've got a ground here. Now, the center pin, I buzzed it out and it goes here. So what we need to do is we need to inject five volts with the positive going here and with the black wire going to ground. So let me show you what that looks like. I introduced, I introduced my DC power supply and I connect the black wire to ground and I connect my red wire to the capacitor. I usually just solder them in place because it's, it's safer. So what I want to do is I want to set it with 5 volts and this time I'm setting a current limit of 500 milliamps because I spotted something on the board that I don't really like. This here, I'm not sure what this component is, but there seems to be a crack in that. So I'm going to put a current limit of 500 milliamps on it, just in case the board is shorted. This is my motherboard, and you can see I have connected up my jumper wires. So my red wire is connected to the capacitor, and the black wire is connected to the ground, just like I showed in the last section of the video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch on my power supply, set it to 5 volts and we're going to set a current limit of 500 milliamps to start with. And let's connect it up. Okay, so when I connect it up, it's immediately pulling the full 500 milliamps. Well, it's saying 499 here, but that's essentially the full 500 milliamps. So it appears that we do have a short on the board because it shouldn't be pulling that amount of current. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start touching around the board and see if I can find if anything heats up. I touched around the motherboard but none of the components were heating up. However, the fact that there was 500 milliamps drawn, I think that's indicative of there being a short on the motherboard. So what I wanted to do at this point was to shut off the power and have a closer look at this component that we looked at earlier. This looks like it is cracked. Now I'm not exactly sure what this is. It doesn't look like a capacitor. There's no markings on it to say that it's an IC. But it seems like it only has two connections on it. It seems like it's connected to this IC here. And then this side of the component is connected to the pins of the IC here. So what I'm going to do to try and work out what this component is, I have identified this IC right here as an ETA6003. So I'm going to download a data sheet and I'm going to see from the data sheet if it shows a sample circuit that might help us to work out what component I might expect to see between pin what is it, 1 and pin 4. So let's grab that data sheet and see if we can work out what that component might be. This is the data sheet for the ETA6003, so it's a 2.5 amp, 3 megahertz, switching charge with dynamic path, power path management. Okay, what's it say here? ETA6003 is a switching lithium ion battery charge with dynamic power path control and input current limiting. So, it's used to charge a battery and it regulates a system voltage to a preset voltage. So, let's get a look at it here. Okay, so we have a 5 volt input. And as you can see here, there's a battery circuit to charge the battery, and it also regulates a system output voltage, which then goes to the system load. So I guess this would be our main power rail on this then, after this IC, and this is what is handed off to all of the secondary circuits to produce all of the other voltages. But what I need to know is the pinout. So let me check it here. Okay, so that's the pinout for this IC. So what I'm going to do next is mark those onto the IC that I have on the board. 
I've marked in the pins on this I see on our motherboard and what you can see here is that our dodgy looking component is connected to pin 1 on one side and pin 1 is sys and it's connected to pins 3 and 4 on the other side and they're marked SW. So if I go back to my datasheet and I view the typical application, this is just like a sample circuit for this IC, what would I expect to find between the sys and SW pins? Well in this sample configuration my sys pin is here and my SW is here and what we have between the two is a 2.2 microhenry inductor. Also in the pin description section of the datasheet we have pin number 1 which is a sys pin and the description for that is system voltage pin. It is also the switching regulator's output pin. Connect an inductor and capacitor to form the output filter. So that's the advice that they give you and that seems to be what they've done in this scenario as well. So if you take the sys pin here we have a capacitor here and an inductor and that's what this component is, I'm pretty sure of it. So the question is what to do next. That inductor is unlikely to be the cause of a short so maybe we have something else wrong with this circuit. So I think what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go around in diode mode and check out a few capacitors around the system board and see if we can find any indication of a short. So with all power disconnected from our motherboard and my multimeter in diode mode I introduce my red probe and connect it to ground and with my black probe I want to start taking some measurements. So the first place to check is just at our input where we were injecting voltage. So I want to make sure there's no short in the input. When I place my probe to this capacitor right here, I find that there is 0 0.540. So there's no short on the input. Now as we established earlier on, this ETA6003 is a very important chip for this motherboard. It provides us with our charging voltage for our battery, which comes out here, and our sys voltage, which is our regulated system voltage, which comes out here. But what I want to check first is to make sure that there is no short on the input to that IC. So as we saw from our pinouts, pin number 2 is our input. So I place my black probe to the positive side of the capacitor on the input and when I measure there I measure 0 0.540 also. So we've no short on the input to this ETA6003 but now we need to check the outputs. And the main output is our regulated system voltage which is on this pin right here, pin number one. And the easiest place to measure this is at this capacitor right here. So again in diode mode, I place my black probe to this side of the capacitor here, and we measure 0 0.009. So what does that tell me? Well, it looks like we have a short on our main system power rail. I've just gone a split screen to hopefully explain this a bit better. The section where I'm reading the short is this here on sys pin 1. So we've got an inductor here and a capacitor here. So if we look at that on our sample circuit right here, that corresponds to sys and a dot here between our inductor which corresponds to this inductor and our capacitor here which corresponds to this capacitor. So what I'm thinking here is that our short is somewhere down this system load right here. Now as we all know at this stage, when we think we have a short on the motherboard, the way that we flush out the shorter component is by using voltage injection. We inject voltage onto the motherboard and slowly raise the current until something heats up. And whatever heats up is the shorter component that's carrying the current to ground. So my next natural step would have been to inject voltage at this point here and then slowly raise the current and try and find out which component was shorted. However, I was looking at this inductor again. I had presumed that this was maybe physical damage, but I thought, look, it's probably better that I just remove it and then inject the voltage, just to rule it out. So that's what I did next. So with the magic of Photoshop, we removed the inductor. And with the inductor removed, I want to confirm that we still have a short on our main system power rail which again corresponds to this point here, but now with this inductor removed. So I introduce my multimeter in diode mode once again. I place my red probe to ground and my black probe to that capacitor where we measured once again. But when I measure this time, I measure 0 0.571.
So we no longer have a short here after removing this inductor. So if a short is not on that side of the inductor, then it's got to be on this side, right? Well, in diode mode, once again, I place my probe to the other side of the inductor and it measured 0 0.009. So the short is on this side right here. But how can that be short? With our inductor removed, the only thing it's connected to is the output of this chip right here. And this is our ETA6003. So how is it finding a path to ground from here? Well, this is what I think is happening here. This SW, I think, stands for switch to output. And I think what is happening here is that this is a high side, low side MOSFET configuration. And I think we are finding a path through a shorted low side MOSFET to ground. So that's what I think is happening. Even if it's not that MOSFET, somehow it is finding a path through ground through some component of this IC here. And unfortunately what I think that means is that this IC, this ETA6003, is the component that has failed. So how can I prove that this IC is the cause of our short? Well, one thing I can do is I can remove the IC, introduce my multimeter in diode mode once again, place my red probe to ground and take a diode mode reading at the same place we were reading a short. And when I did that, it measured OL. So that proves that the IC is the cause of our short. What I wanted to do next was to provide definitive proof that this IC actually is shorted. So what I suspected was that my SW pin was shorted through this MOSFET to P ground. Now, I wanted to do this in real life with my microscope. However, when I grabbed this with my tweezers, it flew up in the air. And it hasn't been seen since, ladies and gentlemen. I spent about three quarters of an hour looking for it, but I couldn't find it. These things are so damn small, it's unbelievable. But what I'm going to do is just show you here what I tested. So this is pin 4, SW. This is P ground, pin 5. I placed my red probe to P G N D number 5. My black probe to SW, and when I did that, it measured 0 0.009. So this is shorted. Just to show you that on the schematic once again, this is shorted to here. So that's where I will conclude my project for this week, guys. Hope you all enjoyed the little follow along. That was quite an interesting one. So it seems like we need a new ETA6003. I think I might just buy one of these and fit it just for the practice because I need practice on fitting these QFN ICs. As you saw of the job I did last week, these are quite difficult to put back in place. But I just want to say thanks for all the comments below. I enjoy the feedback, both positive and negative. So if you have anything to say in the video, don't feel shy. Post whatever you want down below and I will have something new for you next week.